Ever had a dream but didn't know how to make it happen? Sure you have. We did too. A really cool guy, Zach Campbell, gave a speech at our school. The gist? You can't wait for big things to come to you. You've got to make big things happen. So how do you do it? We took what we were passionate about and combined it with our inspiration from Zach and found a space where our dream could live. And that's how Road to the Shire was born. So what's Road to the Shire? Here's the shorty. Take three Hobbit fans and a big idea. What big idea? This big idea. Let's unite all of Tolkien fandom around a single cause. If we come together, we can make our mark on the story we love on the big screen and maybe even get some fans in as extras. Awesome, right? Totally. There was just one problem, our budget, or lack thereof. Can you say college students? So what'd we do? We turned to the interweb and some plastic ears, and we had to do it now. Because why? Because the movie was getting ready to start production. So what was our first step? Lord of the Rings fans are intense and totes loyal. And second only to the craziest fans on the planet. Yep, you guessed it. Flippy hair and screaming girls. <laughs> No, we're not talking about Twilight, we're talking about the Beeb and his army of 13 bajillion Twitter followers. So we remixed the most viewed YouTube video of all time, Baby, Hobbit style. The Hobbits asked JB and his believers to give us a tweet, and in return we promised to name our firstborn child Beaver. So what happened? We gained a following of Hobbit Chicas, crashed Middle Earth News, Hobbit and Five, and started finding cash on our cars. We also got a call, a big call, from the management of Lord of the Rings franchise wanting to collaborate. Behold the power of Beeb. We found closet Tolkien fans everywhere and proved that Hobbits can dance, but can they cook? Can you say second breakfast a la mode? Dining with the Dean can. We showed up on a national TV cooking show and kicked butt against some professional butt kickers. In the end, the Dean couldn't deny the power of breakfast. First, second, or elevensies, and awarded us a giant check for three grand. So we pocketed a thousand, made some goodwill by donating the rest of the New Zealand earthquake relief, and ended up front and center on the official movie blog. That's right, Google The Hobbit. It's the first thing that comes up. Next, like any small town star, aka waiter hoping to make it big, we traveled to the City of Dreams, the Big Apple. We staged a LARP in front of Stephen Colbert's studio, made friends with LARPers across America, and said good morning to America. Next thing we knew, a TV radio personality in the Netherlands was podcasting about you know who. No, not the Dark Lord, it was us. Our movement was truly global. Eat your heart out, Voldemort. Speaking of hairy feet, we saw loads of them on September 26th, Hobbit Day. Legit fans responded to our call and sent in videos and pictures of their celebrations from Denver to France. This barefoot bonanza caused a stir with the press and made Hobbit's top stories across the land. Then the mothership of New Zealand News, stuff.co.nz, think New York Times only Kiwi style sweet Hasbro, featured us on the front page. Before the end of the day, we had offers to stay in people's homes on location and donated buddy passes for airfare. The common theme, don't give up. We want to see your dreams come true and get on the set. So all in all, did we accomplish what we set out to do? You bet we did. We brought together fans from 64 countries, reached over 100,000 people worldwide, garnered the attention of Upper Ups and Peter Jackson's camp, and given fans everywhere a form to make their mark on the movies they love. Oh, and we did it like for no dinero. That's like, no media dollars. Word. And the party isn't over. Look for the documentary. That's it. This video's over. Big ideas have no limits. Think outside the box. Jeez.